The dates are going by up here in the corner. So there's 1980. We're just going month by month. The size of the circles is by, scaled by how big the earthquakes are. You can see the scaling right there, right? And then they're just going to appear, and then they're going to slowly fade away. And depth is the color. So you can see big earthquakes and little ones, and we constantly have earthquakes in our region. There are tens of thousands of earthquakes over what we call our earthquake catalog. And they also occur in patterns that we recognize as specific areas. So Offshore, actually, we see a lot of earthquakes um, at the kind of the southern end and northern end of this Juan de Fuca plate, where it kind of meets a couple of other plates and they're breaking up and jostling at their edges. And then we also um, see them along what's called the Blanco Transform Fault, a strike slip fault, much like the San Andreas down here. Northern California, Southern Oregon had a lot pop off in the 1990s. Um, but meanwhile, we're seeing a kind of a constant background. Of course, we don't feel the vast majority of these earthquakes that happen in the Puget Sound region. Oregon's pretty lucky. It just it stays really well. Oregon's pretty boring is another way I'll put it, <laughs> to a seismologist. Um, but it, you know, it, it has a lot less going on down there. And what I'm going to do is actually jump this ahead a little bit. There's so much interesting stuff in all the time that's available. The question is, can I get the mouse to talk to me or not? Maybe I can't. Maybe I can't see it well enough to, to, it's down there, but okay. So that was Nisqually, right? December 2001. And it's, it's close enough now. We'll let, it, we'll let it run out a little bit. So our main locuses of earthquakes are actually those crustal or slab earthquakes right under the Puget Sound region, and that's why a lot of the concentrated monitoring has been there. These distant offshore ones, even though they're pretty large and pretty frequent, really don't present a hazard onshore. They're not tsunami sources, and they're also too far away to create a lot of shaking uh, onshore from these events out here. Now, notice what's missing, right? We just don't see anything in that part where Aaron just told us was the potential magnitude 9 earthquake all in that area. We see it all filling in further in underneath our feet or much further offshore, but not in the part that we think of as this critical uh, megathrust zone. So I'll call that the dog that hasn't barked in the night, right? In the entire time we've been recording earthquakes, there's been barely anything at all, even down at low magnitude levels, on the Cascadia subduction zone. 